Hey fellow creators, my name is Sarah, and can I just say I am super excited that you're able to join me here on the other side of the screen. I can see you. Yes, I can. You're right there and you're smiling. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'm so thankful that you're here on this channel supporting it because already the community that I've gotten to know over the past couple of weeks since I started the channel has been nothing but amazing. So please comment below. Let me know what you think. If there are any topics that you'd like to hear about, please write them below and I promise you I will respond. Now, I want to do a special shout out to Badia who commented on a video I posted a few days ago. Her comment was, thanks for your video. It was helpful. You're very welcome. However, please give more examples and an explanation for this subject of balance sheets. What I've done in the context of this video is created a four part balance sheet practice problem that we can go through together. And I'm going to ask you at this point in the video to go and grab a piece of paper and your pen and let's practice together because there's nothing better than interacting with the problems as we do it. So are you ready? Let's go. Let's begin with a definition of the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a report, a financial statement that includes three primary sections. The first are your assets or what the business owns, liabilities, what the business owes, and equity, what the business owners have invested into the firm to be able to you know, establish the firm itself. It's essentially money that the business owes back to the shareholders or to the owners who've invested that money. And the key thing here to remember is that it's as of a specific date, a single point in time. So we can have a balance sheet for today and we can also have a balance sheet for tomorrow. You don't have a balance sheet for January 1st through December 31st. That's not a balance sheet. A balance sheet is a single point in time. If you haven't watched my previous video on three financial statements, I would highly recommend you pause this video and go watch that video first to give you a good overview of what the three different types of financial statements are. The balance sheet is actually your snapshots. I use this analogy and these three icons to help you remember the three types of financial statements. The balance sheet is the camera. It's that single frame in time telling you about your business's financial health. Overall, what are the assets and what are the liabilities? Do they equal each other? Hopefully they do. The next statement is your profit loss statement or your income statement. And that is a series of snapshots over time. Hence, we're using this icon of the video camera. So over time, we have a series of revenue coming in, we have expenses, and then we get to calculate the profit. That is the income statement. And finally, we have this cash flow statement, which reveals dollars in time. It shows you where money is going into the firm and where money is going out. It's your inflows and your outflows. These three icons are excellent ways to understand, not memorize the three different financial statements. This is a good moment for you to get a piece of paper and a pen and follow along with me. You can pause the video at any point and try the problems on your own and then start it again for the answers. Actually, I've taken a balance sheet practice problem and broken it down into four segments or four parts. Each part is going to build on top of the other one. So use the information from one question for the following questions. Are you ready? Let's begin. Part one, an architect decides to open a bank account for their newly established architecture practice. They deposit $100,000 of their own savings to get started. What type of financial statement would the $100,000 be captured on? Okay, so I've already underlined, as you can see, $100,000, that's key pieces of information to start this firm. What is the question asking for? It's asking for what type of financial statement or statements, which means there might be more than one answer, would this $100,000 show up on? Let's analyze the problem one definition or one term at a time. Pro forma. If you're unfamiliar with this term, pro forma is another phrase that means prediction. 
It simply means where do you want to be X number of time, days, years from now? It is your prediction of where you think you're going to be. Is that a type of statement though? It's actually not a type of statement. It is simply a prediction and therefore would not have the $100,000 that you actually invested as the architect in this prediction report. We're going to cross that off completely. Okay. B balance balance sheet. Now hundred thousand dollars from the architect savings. Is that an asset, a liability, or is that an equity? hundred thousand dollars would definitely show up on the balance sheet because hundred thousand dollars cash is an asset. So we will put a check mark right there and continue modified accrual. Modified accrual is actually an accounting method. It's a way of handling your money. It's not a statement necessarily. It's not something where you would see specific amounts of, you know, investments and things like that. It's just a way to handle your money, a way to count your cash, so to speak. Therefore that is not part of the answer. D cash flow. Cash flow is an interesting one. As we know, cash flow has to do with where money is coming from and where money is going to. And if we look at a sample cash flow statement, we know that it is divided in terms of your operations, your operation costs, right? Your financing costs and your investing costs. And at the very bottom, it looks at how much money you started with at the beginning of the period, what the change in dollars was and where are you at in terms of your dollar amount at the end of the period. So the hundred thousand dollars would actually be captured in the cash flow statement as money that goes into the cash amount at the beginning of the period. So therefore we're, we're going to put a check mark next to that. And if you need more information about cash flow, this is also in the three financial statements video income statement. Will that hundred thousand dollars of savings show up on the income or profit loss statement? Not really because the income statement again is revenue it's expenses related to running the business related to operations and produ production of your product. The income statement would definitely not be on that list. What do we have BD? So as we can see, what are we left with F and then G we know it's not G cause we've crossed off a therefore our final answer is. F did you get that right? Great job. Let's move on to part two. Now we're going to use the same information from part one and continue in part two. Using the sample balance sheet provided fill in the boxes where the architects hundred thousand dollars bank deposit is captured. More than one box may apply. Okay. Using the sample balance sheet provided, which is on the next slide, fill in the boxes where the architects, hundred thousand dollar bank deposit is captured. You can pause the video right here. If you'd like to figure out where the hundred thousand dollar goes, yes, a hundred thousand dollars in a sample balance sheet. That is positive. It's money that's coming out of savings. There's no borrowing. Therefore that's an asset. It's going straight into the business. We're going to put a hundred thousand dollars under a, because we know for sure it is a cash asset. That is a line item under the balance sheet. Is it a liability? Not unless you spend it or you don't have it anymore, but it's really not considered a liability. Cash is cash. It's a physical, tangible thing. Therefore, if you have it, you have it. If you don't, then the negative dollar amount would be captured here, but we haven't give, been given anything in this problem that says, that we're losing money or owe money. Therefore, it's not going to go in the box labeled B. And here we have the net worth, which is again, shareholder equity or the amount of capital invested by the owners equity. Would the hundred thousand dollars be equity? Actually, yes. As we said before in the previous problem, hundred thousand dollars is coming straight from the owner's own savings. They're investing it totally into the business and Therefore the business owes a hundred thousand dollars back to the owner or the architect. Therefore I would write the hundred thousand dollars under equity and based on the equation of balance sheets, 
of assets must equal liabilities plus net worth. The balance sheet here definitely balances because we have $100,000 of assets equals $100,000 of liabilities plus net worth. Did you get that? Great job. Let's move on to part three. In the first year of establishing the firm, the architect does improvements to the office for $25,000. The architect finances these improvements with a bank loan of $10,000. The architect also owes consultants $15,000. Fill in the boxes with the correct terms. So are you ready to dive in on your own? Pause the video now and try this question. Let's figure out where each of these terms go first and then attach the dollar amounts because we know the dollar amounts from the actual problem. Notes payable. Notes payable, if we know anything about accounts payable, it means that we owe money. So notes payable means that we've taken out a bank loan. That's a note payable, so we owe money. When you owe someone money, is that considered an asset on your part or is that considered a liability? It's definitely a liability. We'll go ahead and write notes payable in this first box here. Lease hold improvements. Well, we know that the architect did spend on improvements to the office. He actually did invest $25,000. That is another word for leasehold improvements. And in this case, it's considered an asset because you're improving the space, you're improving the office, that money is invested, it is an asset. Therefore, we can write that term under assets. And it's not gonna fit here in the box, but that's okay. We have accounts payable. Accounts payable is money that is owed. What is considered an accounts payable? Well, we can see here that the architect owes consultants who probably worked on a project and produced some important documents for the architect. The architect owes $15,000 in accounts payable. And that will be a liability because again, you owe the consultants money that goes under accounts or liabilities. And we have all the boxes filled out on the left side. That's good. Now we need to put the dollar amounts associated correctly with the actual terms. So how much did the improvements cost here? The improvements cost $25,000, as we can see in the problem. We can write $25,000 as a positive number invested. The bank loan amount that the architect had to borrow. Here we can see it's $10,000. In this sort of notation where we have parentheses in accounting, that means that your dollar amount is negative. But if you don't have parentheses, it means that you're in the positive. Looking at the assets column, we know that that's all the assets. So we can add the cash and the leasehold improvements. Here we have $125,000. We can go ahead and cross off this one. Accounts payable. How much does this architect owe their consultants? or need to pay back to the consultant, that is $15,000. We'll go ahead and cross that one off. Let's add the total liabilities. Total liabilities is your 10,000 plus your 15,000. That's $25,000 worth of liabilities. Okay. And now we're left with $125,000. Well, we have one box left. And if we did the math right, then the $125,000 should go in the total liabilities and net worth. We looked at which was considered an asset, which was considered a liability, and what's equity. And finally, this one's gonna be easy. Does the balance sheet from the previous example balance? Fill in the boxes with the correct dollar amount. Can you guess? Well, you were right. Total assets equals total liabilities plus total net worth. I have four tips for you that I wanted to summarize after reviewing this problem with you. My first tip is make sure to review the architect's handbook of professional practice. 
page 426 to 427. My tip number two is review the five key terms on page 426. Tip number three, this is probably the best tip that I can give, which is go and have coffee with your accountant. Ask questions about specific scenarios. I mean, if you work in an architecture firm or maybe you work in a business or a construction firm, wherever you work, I'm sure there's an accountant. And talking to your accountant is probably your single greatest resource here. Not necessarily for the ARE exam, but this will be a life resource for you. My last tip is learn these concepts for your future financial success. I know I just said that. Not just for this exam, because this exam is just a one-time thing, right? But learning is for life. And being able to tie this to a real-world application as what we've gone through today is really key. So come up with a scenario on your own. Think about if you were running of a firm and invested some amount and then had to pay for other expenses, create a sample balance worksheet and talk to your accountant about it and see if you've captured the line items in the correct areas. As you know, at the end of every video, I always provide a sample bonus question. What financial data is shared between the balance sheet and the profit loss statement? Comment below if you know the answer let me know if you have any questions related to this or any other topic that shows up on the ARE 5.0 practice management exam. And I promise you, I will respond to your comments below. I've really enjoyed having you here today and see you in the next video.